I mentioned that I actually really liked Digital Devil Saga 1 and after playing that I was really eager to start the second game and see how the story continued. If I'm being honest it really surprised me with how much I enjoyed it and with how much it actually made me feel sad at times. I'm pretty glad I actually ended up getting this along with the first entry a few months ago since in the end this definitely has to be one of my favorite Mega Ten titles after the ones I played. It really is a fun game and with a really really interesting plot and really fun gameplay but I actually want to uh, get into what I liked about the second game and one of those things definitely of course has to be the gameplay. It's extremely similar to the first game and other Mega Ten titles that use the Preston system but I don't mind this as much just because again I really like the Preston system and I liked all the unique parts of the skill progression and just whatever else the first game had. The only minor differences in this game is that you know you can actually equip rings that can actually boost your stats and give you other side effects and also you can actually enter Berserk mode which basically makes you crit a lot more often but you miss a lot more often too so it's kind of a risk reward thing and the mantra grids also kind of different where instead of going down different paths you can actually pick a you know slot on the grid learn it and then parts around it could open up and this can actually let you learn stronger skills without learning the weaker skills like for example you can actually learn something like Zama before you get Mazan and that's actually kind of useful you know I have had situations like that but again it's still really fun and I love the gameplay. I also really like the story as I mentioned before and I think it's pretty interesting like finding out why he hated Sof and why the main cast got their ability to turn into demons and much more. I like that it just gets straight into it and it doesn't really waste much time on filler. The story this time around is that the Koma Society wants to study God and try to convince it to fix the environment since he was losing faith in humans and also the Koma Society was doing a lot of experiments on Sarah since she was the only one that could actually talk to them and there's a lot more to it but this is the basics of the plot and what I understood. It's also interesting to see how the characters were as humans since they were AI created by Sarah after some events regarding he and Sof. I also really enjoyed new characters like Roland and his backstory however much there was of it but overall it's a good continuation of the first game and there's a lot of interesting parts to it. I also do love the bosses here and to me they were as interesting and fun as the first game's bosses. A lot of them have really interesting formations and can also unleash combo attacks against you which I don't really think happened in the first game. Some of my favorites definitely have to be ones against the Tribe Hava. I don't think I pronounced that right but all of their matches along with the heat fight, the one against Vita and the one against Trobo Dog. At least I think I pronounced that right. But the latter one is pretty cool because it can summon shadow versions of the main party's demons and that actually copies the exact skills you have in at that time which is pretty cool. Then there was the ones against the Tribe Hava and each of them have their own focus like for example the air one being able to have a lot of void skills. So for me I want to take out that one just so I don't have to constantly just swap my focus on the other one so you know I can make sure I deal the most damage every time I do it. And also the OSC is really great here I love it and of all the SMT titles I played this definitely has to be my favorite one overall. Stuff like Alive, Egg of the Universe, Underground City, Inherent Will and basically all the battle themes are just great. And I can't say if I like it more than the first entry but frankly it's still really good. And the next point is the exact same from the first video and that's how open the game is when it comes to lowering skills and again it's the same as the first game but now it's different because you actually all on a grid instead of following different paths. This kind of annoys me as I mentioned before but at least again it has the advantage of you being able to skip some low level skills and even then it's still up to the player what skills they want to learn for each character and I still love that. And yes while each character does have different stats that line up with different builds like a gorilla being a magic attacker there's nothing stopping you from you know making her a physical attack goal. The game also has a decent amount of side content where you can fight a few optional bosses. There's a total of 9 different ones and a lot of them all in the end game but it's still nice that they're there. And honestly after playing through the second game it really made me enjoy the series a whole lot more. I definitely would rank the second game maybe a little bit higher than the first because of the story but regardless I still enjoy a whole lot. And of course no game is perfect and sadly you know Digital Devil Saga 2 isn't perfect. One of the 
things I did not like definitely had to be how a lot of the main cast just did not get as much development. Kyoto's like Gale and Aguila I was hoping had something but at most Gale had a connection to Angel since he was her husband before he died. That's pretty much all that came of it and I do wish that we had more time with the human selves. I do think that he and Self had good moments with each other but again Kyoto's like Gale, Aguila and Cielo had not much to them. At most Aguila was just a nurse and I don't even think Cielo had a human form since I believe he was an experiment that failed. I do think their interactions with each other in the game was good. I also did get sad at their death but again I just wish there was a bit more depth to them. And the same goes with Roland since again I did like his backstory it's just again I wish there was more. And this entry is also insanely grinding like the first one and that's if you really want to get all the skills. While it's not as bad on a casual playthrough, it still can get pretty annoying since in the second game for me I had to grind at random spots and of course if you again want to do the side bosses you have to go out of your way just to you know go get the skills necessary. I also do think it's slightly worse here since characters like Roland and Aguila and Self end up leaving the party for a bit. So if you want to use them in the end game dungeon, you really have to spend a little bit more time grinding skills for them. I also didn't like how short the story was, since again I was hoping for more. I know the first game wasn't long either, but I feel the difference here is that the second game was meant to expand and explain on the first game, and as I mentioned in my character points, some of them just did not get a whole lot of stuff. It took me about 30 hours to finish it, and I feel if it was about 5 to 10 hours longer, I feel a lot of the characters would have gotten somewhat more developed, and just, you know, a lot of other parts would just feel a bit nicer. And frankly that's really all I disliked on the game and I really do mean it when I say it's one of my favorite SMT titles from the gameplay to how the story plays out. And while I don't think the second game improved on the gameplay as much like with the weird quirks, I can still say it's a really unique and nice game and honestly I still do like a lot about it. And I do wish after Nocturne HD, I hope these games also do get an HD re-release since hopefully you know they can actually help improve some of the weird parts to it. But of course that's just me being really hopeful. But I want to hear what you guys liked and disliked about this entry. Let me know in the comments below. And of course before the video ends I'm just going to go over my likes and dislikes. Likes, gameplay, story, interesting bosses, great OST, fun skill progression, and a good amount of side content. Dislikes, not all the characters get much development, game can get really grindy, and really short story. Thank you all for watching and see you guys later.